Every IQ3 and IQT3 actuator contains historical performance known as a data logger. The data logger records how the actuator has operated, but also monitors environmental conditions in which the unit is installed and monitors the performance of the valve over time. In order to view this historical information, we need to use a software program called Insight2, which is available from the Rotalk website. Once Insight2 has been installed onto a laptop or a PC, that device can be moved within a 10 meter range of the actuator to extract the historical file directly from the actuator to the laptop or PC. Alternatively, the Rotorx setting tool could be used as an intermediate device so I can transfer the information from the actuator into the tool and then take the tool back to my laptop or PC so it can transfer it in a more convenient location. All Rotorx setting tools can be set up for multiple functions which we call missions. So a mission could be something like uh, adding a language file into an actuator, upgrading the firmware, or in this case, we're going to use it to extract this historical information. All setting tools are supplied with a default mission, which is to extract this historical information. So if the tool has not been repurposed for something else, I do not need to make any configuration changes on the tool itself. I simply go through the procedure that we're about to do shortly. If the tool has been used for some other purpose, then it, we need to revert it back to its default setup in order to extract this information. In this case, I have a brand new tool, so I'm simply going to make an infrared, uh, sorry, a Bluetooth connection between the tool and the actuator by aligning the infrared ports and pressing the down arrow. And provided I do this correctly, I will get a blue flashing light on my setting tool, which quickly becomes solid, and a solid light on the display of my actuator, just letting me know that I've got a Bluetooth connection. To execute a mission, once you have a Bluetooth connection between your actuator and your tool, you simply need to press the upload download key, which is this larger button in the center of the tool. After pressing the upload download key, the enter key will slowly flash blue, and I have two seconds, once it starts flashing blue, to press enter to execute the mission. So I press the upload download key, press enter, and we will see that the upload download key is now flashing green blue and there is a progress bar on the display of the actuator showing that the information is being transferred from the, the unit into the setting tool. Depending on the size of the historical information that the actuator has stored, this may take up to five or six minutes to fully transfer. Once the mission has been completed, the setting tool does give us an indication as to whether it was successfully completed the, the mission that we asked it to. And the way that this is shown is by flashing green lights between the enter and the upload download key. The lights could flash red, which shows that the mission has been unsuccessful. The result message is a very brief thing which happens automatically at the end of each mission, so it's easy to miss. To reconfirm if a mission was successful or not, we can use the left and the right arrows on the tool, press them simultaneously, and we will see that result repeated. Here we can see we had a successful mission, so the, inf the historical data logger file in this actuator has now been transferred to this setting tool. Once I've completed that, I simply need to break my Bluetooth connection by pressing the plus and minus keys together. And now I need to take my tool back to my laptop or PC to connect this setting tool to, to that device and view the historical information. Once I'm back in my office environment, I can now transfer the information from the tool onto my laptop or PC to look at it with the Insight2 software. In order to transfer the files from the, the tool to my laptop, I need to put this setting tool into Bluetooth discoverable mode so that when we do a Bluetooth search, it will be visible. To enter into Bluetooth discoverable mode, we simply need to hold the enter key and the upload download key, so the two slightly larger keys, together for two seconds. And once we have done it for two seconds, we will see the enter key is slowly flashing blue, just confirming that we are now in Bluetooth discoverable mode. After logging into the Insight2 software and putting the setting tool into the discoverable mode, if we do go to the connection tab and discover devices, the laptop is now going to scan the room looking for Rotorq compatible devices with this software. So in this case, because I have several actuators around me, it's going to give me a list of actuators via under the various different types of product supported by the software. But also it is going to give me a list of setting tools which are compatible with the software, which is currently in discoverable mode. All of the setting tools have a unique reference number, although this is not visible from the outside. It's a reference to the internal components used. 
we simply if we are only looking for one tool there's only one tool in the vicinity that will be the simply the, the tool that we see and we'll try to connect to in this case i'm looking for this second device here i right click it select connect and i get this message just to ensure that the setting tool is in discoverable mode before selecting ok and not visible on the screen right now but what is happening is the blue flashing led on the setting tool enter key is now going much quicker and that just gives me an indication that there is data transfer happening between the tool and the laptop After a few moments, the connection to the tool has been completed and we can see that the various different products that the tool supports are listed on the left hand side and any which have a drop down box next to them show that they have some files for that model of unit. So previously we downloaded a file from an IQ3 actuator. So if I expand the drop down box here, it will give us the serial number of the actuator and the time and date reference when that file was downloaded. So in order to view that file, I simply double left click. And again, after a few short moments, the file will be transferred from the tool into the, the laptop and we can look at all of the information for this particular actuator. So we can see we now have the drop down box next to the serial number of the unit. We expand that. This is all of the pieces of information that we could look at. If we simply want to save this file to maybe forward to a Rotorc office for further support, then we from here select right click the serial number of the unit and you can see we have this option for save as. When I select that option, we will see that we can save this as an .idf file, a Rotorc data file. The default file name is again the actuator serial number and the date and time reference the file was extracted and it might also be useful to include some reference to your site details for this particular asset. Once we select save we will get this message asking us if we want to extract all of the information of the unit. So in this case it's a good idea to ensure the tick box is selected and we press OK and this file will now be saved onto my, my laptop in the location. I selected for forwarding as required or simply holding as a local record.